Happy Sabbath, my brothers and sisters in Redland Church. I'm happy that today I have been assigned by Pastor Sangari to be your speaker of the Word of God. As we start, let's pray. Our Father which art in heaven, we are so grateful to you for this Sabbath day wherein we can worship you together through live stream. We invoke the presence of your spirit to guide our minds that everything that we may learn from your word may become a strength of our faith in you, especially in our lives today. For we pray in Jesus' name, our Lord. Amen. Saudara-saudara sekalian, I choose the topic today as it is found in James 4, verse 14b, what is your life? A question, what is your life? Why? Because uh, in James' eye, he can see that uh, many Christians whose life on earth is a presumptuous boasting. They do not know what will happen tomorrow and yet they continue on doing their own planning. Today, we found that some people say that our life is a misery, full of stress and suffering. Whereas for others, they see life as a happy one. Why? What is the difference between these two groups of people? The first one, maybe they don't have God in their lives, whereas the other one, they have God in their lives. Looking at the fact that today we are living in the situation of COVID-19 and we still be happy in Jesus, and then a question being asked by the psalmist in Psalm chapter 8, verse 4 is like this. What is man that you are mindful of him? Who are we? Who are you that God is really care for us? Brethren, I remember one time Anais Nin, a writer who says like this, We don't see things as they are. We see them as we are. And so, no wonder that uh, some people, although they are Christians, they still see the life as a misery, whereas others will see it as a happy one. We are happy because we walk with God. We know that the one who cares for our life is someone who has redeemed us from sin. And in this life, according to Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 to 7, we can find some admonishment from Solomon. Number one, he said that trust in the Lord. If we trust in the Lord, God will bless us. Number two, don't lean on your own understanding. Don't black your own plan, but trust in the Lord. And then number three, acknowledge God because He is the only one who care for us because He has redeemed us from our sins. And number four, fear the Lord and shun evil. If we fear the Lord, then we put out our plan to commit any sin. And so, looking at the strata of life, are you poor? Are you rich? Or just enough? Do you have job or jobless? Yet, I will say that every one of us, as human being, the bubble put us in one level. 
according to Romans chapter 3.23, we are all sinners. No one is exempt. And so, because we belong to God and God is ours, we continue on worshiping Him, although only through live stream today. Because of the pandemic, COVID-19 is still going on today. It makes responses from people which are divided into two. Number one, positive response. Being Christians, we can see that COVID-19 helps us to grow in faith. We become more dependent on God. We pray more. We study the Bible more. We seek the Lord. And number two, the COVID-19 help us also to open up online ministries for the sake of other salvation. In fact, it is booming now in uh, all the worlds. Number three, COVID-19 is teaching us cleanliness. There is a saying that cleanliness is a step to holiness. In fact, the Apostle Peter said that be holy as your God is holy. But those who have no God in life, they will always complain by saying that we lost our income, we lost our job. See, COVID-19 has cause economic problem individually, family, and also for the country. We can see also the fact that schools is stopped. They ask the students to go on study online. And anyone can be a victim of COVID-19. In fact, many have lost their lives. Why COVID-19? Well, there are many reasons in the mind of people, many theory, but whatever theory that we may hold, we can say that COVID-19 is a result of sin because it brought diseases it brought sufferings and also death. The fact that uh, in the body of human being, the body has deteriorated, less immunity to against any disease. Satan is continuing on claiming that he is the owner of this earth and he is making his effort to put down the faith of the Christians. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, it says that Satan is acting just like a lion who would like to destroy the faith of the believers. So, we can see that people is actually becoming more wicked except for the Christians and even the cringe Christians still the victim of wickedness the body according to Apostle Paul in Galatians chapter 5 19 he said that the body is not for sexual immorality impurity and sensuality but it is being practiced anywhere in the world today people many many more becoming immoral and so the admonition to us as paul wrote to the corinthians in first corinthians chapter 6 verse 9 
if we uh, get involved in pra practicing immorality, impurity, and sensuality, we cannot expect to be there in heaven. And that's why James 4, verse 7, advises us uh, to submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. If we surrender our lives to God, for sure, we can uh, resist the devil who came with so many temptations to put us down. And by prayer, we can be winner. Remember that our body belongs to God. Inside our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. In fact, the Holy Spirit, according to Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 16, our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And so, you are not your own, according to 1 Corinthians 6, 18, because we have been redeemed by Jesus Christ. So in the sight of God, the human life is actually very much valuable. What is life? We are so valuable because God created us according to Genesis 1, 27 and uh, the first before 26. God created us according to his image and likeness. And so wherever we are, whoever we are, we bear in us the image of God. And thank for the Lord because he has redeemed us from sin. And so by redemption, we are not entitled to eternal death. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him, in Jesus, shall not perish, but will have eternal life. Why? Because God is love. John 3.16 and 1 John 4.8 When God redeemed us from sin, he plans for our future. He plans something for us. According to Jeremiah 29, verse 11, God would like to put peace in our heart. In fact, Jesus said to his disciples that peace I leave to you, not like the peace that is given by the world. Because the world's peace is only temporary. But with Jesus, it could mean a prosperity of life. Prosperity means success, blessing, peace, healthy life, long life. And remember that everything of the blessings that have been said is conditional. Because Jesus said in John chapter 15, verses 4 and 5, unless we remain faithful to Jesus, because Jesus said, remain in me, because without me you can do nothing. In fact, Jesus also taught his people in Matthew 6, 36, 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and all other things that we dream on will be added unto you. Friends, God promised us a good future. Our future would be in the kingdom of God because our citizenship is there. We long to go home. We want Jesus to come soon to fulfill his promise that I'll come again to take you to the place where I am. And so, my friends, we must be faithful to him and make our lives really doing what is the will of the Lord. 
here on earth, we may continue the test that comes to our life. Because life on earth is a test. On the other hand, life also is a trust on, of God. A test and a trust. Because the third one I would like you to take home with you is the fact is that our human life on earth is only temporary. All our work, temporary. Everything that we have, only temporary. Anything we can do, only temporary assignment. God would like us to remain faithful to Him. So that when we are faithful to Him, we may pass the test. The test that will always come to us in, in our everyday life is obedience. The test of obedience. Adam failed it in the Garden of Eden and Jesus won it when he came as a human being. Joseph won it when he was tested in moral, morality. Esther was tested in terms of love of the nation and she won. Abraham passed the test of sacrifice and obedience to God and he won. Friends, the next point I want you to understand that we live as a human being, a believers of God on earth. God regarded us as a steward of him. We are his manager. God owned everything in this world according to Psalm 24 verse 1. He gave the power for Adam to manage the world and God gave also to us his people to manage our life, to manage our property and to manage our time. If I can enlarge this, we need to manage our body because our body belongs to God. We need to choose the best food that will make us healthily. Then we need to manage also our time. To us has been given six days for work but the seventh day would be the Sabbath of the Lord. We should not do anything on this day, doing our routine work. And the last one would be, God regarded us as the manager or steward about the property that God entrusted to us. Malachi chapter 3 verses 8 to 10 says that we need to return to the Lord what is His. What is that? According to Malachi the prophet, the tithe of our income, one tenth of our income belongs to God. So we, when we give it back to Him, we only returning what is his but when we give offering it is our gift to god why do we give offering because offering is a sign of our thanksgiving to god as the source of everything in this life and so ask yourself are you faithful in returning to god what is his that is the tithe ask yourself do you like to give to the Lord through the church special offerings that signify that you are so grateful for all the blessings that God gives you? I have an illustration here. You know about the US dollars bill. 
among the face of the presidents of the United States? Who among those faces who seldom or very faithful attending the church, especially in the Seventh-day Adventist Church? Maybe you will agree with me if I say the face of George Washington. Why? Because oftentimes we found that one US dollar which bear the face of George Washington is always there as a gift to God. And seldom we see the face of Thomas Jefferson because seldom we see two dollars. Often we found the face of Abraham Lincoln and Alexander Hamilton because uh, five US dollar bill and ten is all included in our plan giving. Once in a while Andrew Jackson's face is there. That is when we don't plan to give for the Lord and the time for uh, uh, time and offering tithe and offering will be given to God then we don't find anything else and our heart said take that 20 and give it to the Lord friends very seldom but there is someone can give 50 US dollar or 100 US dollar the face of uh, President Ulysses S. Grant and the face of Benjamin Franklin except probably when they give tight then 100 and 100 and 50 and 50 will be there realizing that uh, we are living in the time that is very short we live temporarily it's time for us to give more for Jesus he is coming very soon to take us all to heaven life will be very valuable if we pass the test when we manage God's property well our life will be so much valuable to God the reward is waiting for us both in this earth and in the world to come again remember that our life is only temporary while we live on earth we all only live by the grace of God and so we have to always be thankful to him be grateful to him and let us all determine to live according to his will to live according to the faithfulness of God in us how many of you would like to be grateful to God to be faithful to him because only in the in doing that our life would be meaningful so what is life life would be meaningful if we do the work of God if we serve the Lord if we follow the will of God shall we pray dear Lord our Father in heaven we are so grateful to you for this opportunity that we can worship you together through live stream may you continue to bless the membership of your people in Redlands Church bless every one of them bless pastor Sangari, bless the elders and all the uh, officers of the church, bless every member and thank you so much that you are going to help us to remain faithful to you until Jesus comes. Accept us as we are, dear Lord, and thank you so much for your love to us, for we pray in Jesus' name, Amen. Terima kasih, saudara-saudara. Sudah mengikuti akan kebaktian lewat live stream ini yang telah dibawakan.